Fill up your, you know, even one of your big iPods in, you know, four <laughs> seconds. Uh, it's a lot of data coming in. So there's actually, it turns out that even using fancy hard drives, it's too fast to record. So you have to run software which processes the image down on the fly. You have a supercomputer right behind it, which is doing real-time processing to reduce, calibrate all that data and reduce it down because we just simply can't afford or have the time to write it to a disk. Just make right. a big what case What institution will receive all this information and, and you know... Well, and so it's a group... So the main computer, so sorry, how I got... It has to be at Mylura okay. because that's where the data is. Then out of that, there's much more processed data down, but that is then divvied up depending on who's looking at what. Uh, so for like the epic of reionization, there are actually two things. This instrument can also look for the holes. The holes is being led by Melbourne University in Australia. The statistical signal, the power spectrum, uh, there's a team that I'm leading at MIT and Harvard, which is getting together to try and process that. Thing. So you sort of, you know, another group for the solar, and so you sort of farm it out. It's not, like, it's not like the Space Telescope Institute. You're divvying it up depending on what you're looking at. Yeah. And this is, it's a funny telescope, and this has actually been kind of hard. It's run kind of like a particle experiment. It's so hard to get the thing to work that we aren't getting it to work and then saying, everybody come in and let's parcel out the time. We're sort of taking, you know, we're taking thousands of hours and pouring it towards this observation and that observation and this observation in the first couple of years. After that, we may try and do a little more of that. Though the flip side of that is also, with a 30 degree field of view, you don't have a lot of choices as to where to look. We cover the full observable sky in a hundred pointings. You know, uh, you know, a hundred different locations on the sky. Our field of view is so big, we cover everything there is to see from that location, you know, 30,000 square degrees of sky. We cover in a hundred pointings. When, when we were at the, um, the Sloan, they gather so much information so quickly that they can't process it, they have to send it to Fermi Lab. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and their computers have to process it for them. Yeah. So we're in a similar, it's actually a number of us, including myself. I actually started out as a particle physicist and we, uh, back as a graduate student uh, early on. So, you know, we sort of, because we love the sort of digital problem, that's part of how we got in this game. So, yeah. Are any city people interested in the radio transit thing? Yes, actually there are. And uh, I'm not sure, they probably won't be on the air when we first hook up, but we sort of have this place in the back end for people to plug their machines. If they bring a machine and plug it in, they can get a bit of the data. So I've been talking to a couple of people at the SETI Institute who might be interested in trying to do that sort of thing. Is it possible to relate this to uh, x-ray uh, explosions? Yeah. For clusters. It it's not. There might be something. It's it's not 100. percent It's sort of like looking at it and saying, "Hey, I got a transient now." Oh, for, for transients, transients absolutely. absolutely. For transients, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So if you're doing 30 degrees at a shot, how long do you ta how long does it take to produce a good image? Because the Earth is turning, I believe. Oh, so the 30 degrees tracks. Okay. okay. So we're able to so. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's the important thing is one of these sort of confusing things. So we're, we track the 30 degrees. It's just that there are not that many places to point your telescope. If, you know, if you have a tenth of a degree, there are a lot of places to choose to point your telescope. For us, you know, well, there's no, you know, it's not a real point of moving the RA and deck a degree. We've already, you know, looked at 98% of that sky. We've got to move it along. How long do you have start. to leave the telescope pointed in one place to get an image, get a good image? Ten seconds. Well, so you're almost at the point where you don't really need to track if you had a bigger array. Um, it's good if you assume the, the array in a fixed yeah. point, one second. Yeah, you, you wouldn't have to. Game. It turns out to help, but yeah, you wouldn't have to. It's not a. Yeah. That's a thought. Okay. I just had a little question about the technology of the supercomputer. Yeah. Did you design your chips or are you using? 
something commercial. Uh, so we have, they're actually, so uh, there are sort of two supercomputers. There's what we call the correlator, which is, in radio astronomy, <laughs> is tr a, traditionally, and for our case, a custom computer. But for us, we are not this time designing custom chips. We're using a new type of chip called a field programmable gate array. Uh, and they turn out to give you near custom speeds. You sort of, you almost think of it as burning a program into the chip. You can put a new one. Once you've set it down there, you get very high speeds. The second stage has been a, well, not quite standard style, is a more vanilla flavor <coughs> of supercomputer with a few uh, few hundred processors. Is it a cluster? It's a cluster. It's a cluster style. It turns out it needs very high bandwidth and sort of a funny way of uh, chips talking to other chips. The data flow is a little entertaining and intricate, but <laughs> it's more or less standard. Um, yeah? I was, uh, so what operations is the, uh, the data array performing? Multiplications? Yeah. How, how, how complicated is that program? Is it, or is it just a... Uh, yeah, it's a, basically... A couple of simple operations, or is it... So, one way of thinking about radio interferometry is that same delay idea. Uh, you can, if a source is here, you get a lot of these wave fronts, radio wave fronts coming. So if you get the delay just right, you see that these line up. Whereas a spot over here, another spot over here, its wave fronts will come at a different delay. And so one way of thinking about what a correlator does is it takes these radio signals and it sh takes them and it shifts them off a little bit and adds and goes, is there anything there? Oh, and it shifts it off again and adds and goes, is there anything there, anything there, anything there? Uh, there's some mathematical tricks you can play so that you do it in a slightly different way, but that's really what is happening, is doing that operation over and over again. And the data is coming in at 32 million samples a second per antenna, so you, you sort of have to... Simple math. So that it, thing is doing dead simple math on a lot of data. That's right. Dead simple math. And, and, and short. They're complex numbers, but it's 4-bit, 4-bit complex. So. This is considered very deep. Most correlators are too big. <laughs> uh, the thing is, uh, you are pointing it north and south, and the rotation of Earth is to telling you where you you are pointing it uh, along uh, uh, along the meridian. Well, actually, with a four by four. Sorry, I, no. yeah, I wasn't clear. I sort of was using this. We can actually point it in all directions. Yeah. Okay. So we it's sort of like an out, uh, electrical out as mount. But at that r r rate, the Earth is turning, and yeah. uh, a a a and this is changing your pos position. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> how long does it, it, it take to go 30 degrees, incidentally, in terms of how? Uh, uh, so it's 15, 15 degrees. Yeah. 15 degrees per hour. hour. So. Okay, so so you are, are looking around somewhat. Yeah. Uh, so okay. we are looking around somewhat. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Snapshot, 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 snapshot. Ten seconds each. Yeah. And we have to avoid the sun because it's very bright, and uh -huh. we avoid the center of the galaxy because it's very bright. So all the sensitive stuff, uh, we, we can look at the galaxy and stuff like that, and we look at the sun, actually, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the sensitive EOR measurements are all done during the season when both the galaxy center and the sun are down. Would somebody get, ooh, would it hurt the sensors? No. That's nice. They're fine. It's just... That's nice. It's just... <laughs> That's good. That's good, yeah. <laughs> That's good. yeah. <laughs> Well, you get glare. Oh. Yeah, it's just probably, you know, it's just, it's hard to look at something. It's just, uh, it, 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 everything would be saturated and no yeah. detail. Yeah. I just had a question. Is your, um, is your software designed so that it, it like, will mark like a red flag if there's like a major discovery made? Or, or are you having to analyze like output from the software? Uh, it's... Essentially, there's like program after program after program. The early programs are dumb. They're working on things like, how do you actually take all the data and make a picture? Mm -hmm. But then later, some of the programs we're doing for us, like the transient search, what we right. want to do is say, this is what you, we have, a, you know, you take your first picture of the sky, and then you take another picture of the sky a few seconds later, and you see, has anything changed? And you keep doing that, and you can do things like, well, what about things which, instead of turning on and off in a second, turn off and off in 
half an hour. Well, you try half an hour.